what I'm going to talk about today is um, AW Simple, which is a package that I have created to make utilizing a few of the basic services in AWS a little bit easier uh, than kind of some of the, the um, things that AWS themselves have put out, like such as Boto3. So what is it? So AW Simple. Uh, well, like I said, Boto3, if, if you're familiar with it, that's AWS's um, package that they distribute. It's awesome, but it's actually quite complex because AWS has lots of services, lots of ways to get to them. And in, um, in my experience, you don't necessarily always need um, everything that they, uh, they provide in their API. So what I did is I created a AWS Simple. Um, it is published in uh, PyPI, like you would probably imagine. So if you want it, just do a pip install AW Simple, and you will get it. Uh, so now, since I said it was simple, it only uh, really currently addresses four um, of the services. These are the serverless type services. And again, the reason I did this is that I didn't want complexity. I wanted things that, was, that were managed by AWS themselves. And so it had utilizes uh, S3, which is Simple Storage Service, DynamoDB, which is a NoSQL database, um, kind of like something like uh, MongoDB. Uh, it's not MongoDB, but it's it's kind of similar to that, and it's a document-based uh, database. Uh, SNS, which is Simple Notification Service, and SQS, uh, which are uh, actually kind of work well together. And um, like I said, I, I targeted serverless so that um, th that we can keep the cost down. My particular usage is relatively low, so serverless really works better there. And as it turns out, having kind of a blob storage, you know, a big binary blob plus a database plus notification plus queuing is kind of a po powerful combination. Um, and there, I also am uh, flexible on the identity management I'll go into a little bit about that in a moment. And like I say, it, it uses and works with um, AWS's Boto3. So if you need additional functionality, you don't have to go off into an entirely different system. You can actually build upon this. Uh, it also adds a few more features such as caching, uh, which is really handy in S3, but it also works in DynamoDB. Uh, it uses file hashing for that and uh, pagination. So that you can always get everything you asked for. You don't have to worry about pagination. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about, you know, kind of get a high level description and then touch on some basic examples. So one of the easiest things is uh, S3, which again is a, an object-based storage service. And here, if you, can, if you wanna look at this code, um, you import from AWS Simple the basic S3 access you tell it which bucket you're going to access. So if you've never really worked with S3, um, what happens is you get a collection of buckets that are that you create, which are kind of like directories in to some extent. And then you give it the object that you want to, the object name that you want to use. In this case, it's hello world.txt, which are, they're kind of like files. And then here I'm just writing hello world into that. So in just a couple of lines of code here, uh, you can write out to the cloud and have the, your persistent storage. And then how do you get it back? You read it, use the same thing, S3 access from AW Simple. Uh, you say read string. Now there's different, different ways of getting to data. This is the simplest. You just wanna read the context of the contents of that object. And then you can print it out. In this case, it's our favorite hello world. So that's, you know, that will give you the basic access. And then uh, if you want to actually deal with files that you can uh, download uh, from S3, so you can put up and then you can also download back. And in this case, it's cached. So one of the things that I found is, you know, as we know with caching in computers, that's a good thing. And, um, if you've, if you've looked at S3, they don't really have a hash. They've got this thing called an e-tag, and that is not exactly a hash. It's sometimes this is an MD5 uh, hash, but um, not. And so uh, AW Simple provides true hashing with, a, I ended up using a SHA-512, and uh, 
you can utilize that for content-based uh, file caching, which is good for, now obviously caching is good for everything, but it's especially useful for large files. Uh, so this is just how much code it takes to download uh, from S3 uh, using AW Simple. Now, obviously I haven't gone through all the methods and I'm not gonna go through this list here, but just to suffice it to say that there are uh, a few different methods that are available in the S3 access class. Um, you can test if a bucket exists. You can get the list of all the buckets in an account. You can create delete buckets, uh, do a directory in a bucket. Uh, like I mentioned, we have download capabilities. You can get metadata. You can read lines in case you don't wanna read uh, strings. You can read a collection of, uh, read and write a collection of lines. Uh, you can also make a public readable, which is something something you want to do sometimes if you're publishing, uh, obviously, to the world. Uh, so these are the basic access methods. These are the ones that I found that have been useful for, for my projects. So the next thing I want to talk about in AWS Simple is DynamoDB. I mentioned that it was a NoSQL document style database. Uh, it is also uh, serverless. The only thing that it kind of has that might be a little um, uh, new to people is it has a, it has to, each element has to have a unique primary key. So we'll see this in the code. Um, and so that is either just a hash type key, which they call a partition or a hash and then a range key combination. But somehow you have to have a unique identifier for every element. Um, and also the other thing that AW Simple provides is being able to dump uh, via a scan. Um, so DynamoDB access is the class that AW Simple provides to get to DynamoDB. Uh, the other thing AW Simple uh, provides is the ability to convert from most dictionaries, or at least most simple dictionaries, to DynamoDB. There are a couple of tricky things, such as uh, DynamoDB in BOTO3 uh, deals with numbers as the decimal type uh, from the, the decimal library and also uh, convert into bytes and byte arrays from strings. Uh, so these conversions are provided uh, in AW Simple and also provide getting DynamoDB items out to regular JSON that can then be written to uh, a file or however you wanna, uh, whatever you wanna do with it from there. Has support from some, for some simple queries uh, and I mentioned the, uh, the table scan is also can be cached. So I find that I might have a table that has a lot of data, but I know that it is never gonna change or very slowly change. And I, I don't necessarily want to query it. Uh, I want everything sometimes. And I can do that here if I know that the, the table is not changing or at least very slowly changing. So here's an example, a little more code in this case, but here we have DynamoDB access, uh, you can, we access it with the uh, table name. And then in this case, we're gonna create the table because we haven't used it, but you don't obviously you don't have to do this every time. And then we put the item in here. The, when we create the table using the primary key is just the partition key of email. And so we give an email with a, a particular uh, person the, you know, their email, oops, what is going on here? Okay, and then um, we can give the name and the last name. We can add things because you have a NoSQL uh, database. You don't have to decide all of your fields up front like you do with SQL. Uh, you can add a middle name if you happen to need that. So you can also put that item and then you can retrieve it with the get item um, method and then you'll get your user info back. So this is all it takes to create and utilize tables uh, inside of DynamoDB with AW Simple. Uh, again, there's lots of other methods. I'm not trying to show you everything, but uh, the usual things, kind of the usual suspects where you can uh, delete items, you can drop tables, you can get the various keys that exist, you can do some simple queries. And I mentioned the scan tables, both directly scan, just get the, scan the table or do it with caching. Uh, and then there's also the ability to what I call upsert. If you've heard of this, is where you can upload uh, or basically put an item if it, if it doesn't exist or you can uh, update it uh, if it does exist. 
And then here are the uh, kind of helper functions to, to convert dictionaries to things that Dynamo, dictionaries that DynamoDB uh, can utilize without any problem. Okay, then on to the, the other uh, two services that AW Simple provides access to. Now these kind of go together, so I, I talk about them as a combination. So SNS is the simple notification service and SQS is a simple queuing service. Uh, SNS has what's called topics uh, and then someone can subscribe to this like an email or an SMS message and then uh, or even an SQS queue can subscribe to an SNS notification. So you can essentially connect the output of an SNS notification to the input of an SQS queuing service. Uh, SQS is a relatively straightforward uh, queuing. Uh, if you've ever used queuing, it's, it's pretty similar probably to what you've seen before, uh, which is utilized for you know, communication, task management, work, workload distribution, et cetera. Uh, there's kind of two different forms of utilizing it, which the first one is short poll, which is if you think a message is waiting for you, you go out and you basically just get it. And then there's also what's called the long poll, where every 20 seconds it polls and you poll within a kind of a uh, an infinite loop, if you will. Okay, so how do we actually use this? So here's the combination SNS and SQS example, is we create an SQS um, access up at the top here, and we're doing the, the, the polling based. And then we create the queue, and then we have, we create the notification, the SNS notification service. Um, and then we subscribe. So we take the SNN, SNS, and we subscribe um, that to the SQS access. So basically connecting them up together. And then once we publish to SNS a message, it will go into the SQS queue which we can then receive it, then we can get our message back, and then obviously, in this case, it is the, uh, my message string. So it's pretty straightforward to be able to utilize these um, these two capabilities and, and put them together if need be. Uh, so another, just a comment on um, the IAM or the uh, kind of access management. So, um, I'm not creating anything new here, uh, but there's two different, basically there's two different ways of utilizing um, the access management in AWS, that, at least it's supported here. The first one is by a profile, and uh, the way that works is profile files are kept in your .AWS folder, your home, off of your home directory. Uh, that create uh, containers credentials and your configuration. The other way is passing in your access key and your secret access keys directly uh, into AW Simple. If you do that, you're basic. You are responsible for the um, the management of of that transfer from if you use environmental variables and, and containers or whatever. However you do it, you're responsible for for that. Uh, security. So just keep that in mind. And one of the, the ways that I typically do this is that I subclass AW simple access classes and then I deal with my uh, uh, access management inside of my subclass. So in this case, if I'm using profiles, I'll just give my profile name and then, and then in my code, I will use my, you know, like my S3 access class or would normally use the S3 access class. So that way you can um, have your separation of concerns within your code. Uh, so the, well, one of the uh, things I like to mention is like where this is being used. So I've used it in my own um, backup program, which is also open source here. If you want to go to my repo and take a look at it, which is just a Windows local backup for S3, DynamoDB, and and GitHub. Uh, although AW Simple itself doesn't work with GitHub, but um, so I've used it in applications that I've written, also PyShip, which is a Python freezer installer. And I've used it in proprietary applications and libraries that I've uh, created. So hopefully other people will be able to uh, you know, find uses for AW Simple. So this could be you as far as application usage. 
And this was also featured on uh, Python Bytes podcast number uh, 224. So thanks to Michael Kennedy for uh, for that feature. And if you want to listen to it, go ahead and uh, you know, re-listen to that podcast if you haven't. And of course, uh, it's open source. There's the URL for the repo and the documentation. 